It's now time for our main event with your host, Chris Tetrold Blaine. Welcome to Once Upon a Turnbuckle. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new edition of Once Upon a Turnbuckle. And one thing I really, really enjoy with this, the fact that I've I've now got to, you know, so many episodes and now I've got an excuse to bring back um, previous guests and um, a guy I've got with me. Those of you who've probably seen um, the last episode he did with us last year, you will recognize him. Those who don't, um, the bastard son is back in the house. I, I wanted to say that because I thought it was quite cool. <laughs> Hello. <how are> you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> granted, I am back with a little less hair, but... <laughs> Yes, you are. I'm yeah, back, nonetheless, bit of a bit of a stone cold Steve Austin kind of vibe going on. There. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it it was time. It was uh, I was slowly losing it back here, and I was I thought I was kind of in denial. So it was time to go. <laughs> time to go. You know, that's my plan as well. If I ever came to that, but uh, yeah, yeah. So so not only wrestler, um, owner, and promoter of No Mercy Wrestling, Chris Bevan. It is wonderful to have you back in the house again. Um, we've got quite a bit to catch up on, really. It's only been eight months. Yeah. Um, but we, I think we spoke last time under the guise of, of something else I was doing at the time with the the guys from Pro Wrestling Carnage, mm-hmm. um, and we kind of got into you know what you had going on, sure. and that it's been brilliant to see that, that how much that has progressed um since obviously we're talking about no mercy wrestling yeah and yeah. um you know congratulations firstly um uh, Thank you. Thank you, you know the, the, the how you've launched how it's all started it's you know getting it off the ground i know covid got in the way a little bit um yeah. <laughs> at the beginning again you know to to not only you know delaying the start but then um obviously when you were about to have your first show it put that on hold but but yeah just kind of you know, I'll let you kind of fill the gap between when we spoke last, where you were introducing No Mercy Wrestling and the Academy, and then um, your first show, which you were looking forward to. What what has happened then between sort of then and now? Oh, it's it's, it's been insane. Um, I actually rewatched our last episode yesterday just to remind myself of <laughs> where, where we were at the time. Sure, but um. It's and I actually I remember watching it and thinking, oh my god, we have actually done quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> We've yeah. done a lot in that. Has it, has it actually only been eight months? It has. According to YouTube, it might be a bit longer. Oh, they might be rounding yeah. down a bit, but yeah, Between yeah, eight and nine, yeah. Mm. But I mean, since we last spoke, I mean, I think I said that we were just about to start our classes. Mm. Um, obviously, they did start, and um, we've got a fantastic group of guys, regular regular trainees now that um, are just absolutely killing it right now, and. Mm. Um, obviously, I'll go into this a bit later on, but we've actually built a series of shows around that mm. just to, just to showcase our guys, which um, is amazing. Yeah. And uh, we had a, had the first show of that not long ago, but again, I'll talk about that later. But yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we've we've started the classes. We um, obviously had our first show, um, as you said. The first show was originally supposed to be in January, mm. um, but COVID decided to uh, put a stop to that unfortunately it still lingered it should have been done it's with us, still right? there man it's still <laughs> causing issues um uh, so yeah we ended up having it march 19th obviously it went ahead it was absolutely amazing um of course it was because it was my first show that i promoted i was told uh, by a couple of friends of mine who promote that when that last three count on the last match of the show hits there'll be a feel like a euphoria feeling and a feeling of like <sighs> coming over you. And I was like, I wasn't sure if I would believe it, but it, it is true. Wow, it really cool. does happen. And that last three count, like our, we had our main event was the uh, three-way dance with Alex Windsor, who was Wrestle Carnival champion, mm-hmm. um, Lucia Lee and Cara. And when that last three count hit, I was like, I was, I was obviously, I was back at Gorilla. I was watching on the monitor and I just went, oh, we've done it. <laughs> It's done. All that, all that stress and all that effort is has come to this, and and it is such a great feeling. It really, really is. That's good. And uh, I just want to keep repeating that now. And and obviously, we've had our second show, the the, the academy show, and mm. the same thing happened again. And even if it, if I want to risk saying it, it was even better. It was. That's good. No. It, it was so good. Um, and obviously, as I said, yeah, we've we've got the trainees going. We've got our first show, and now we've got not only um, our own shows, but 
obviously because I own a ring and we have mm. uh, I offer our ring and crew services we've been working with Pro Wrestling Chaos we we provided the ring and crew for their return show which was huge awesome. you know a history making show mm. um we've provided ring and crew for uh defend wrestling uh, yeah. Mark Andrews company yeah. when they did their weekend there in Cardiff um we've crewed for modern nomad we've been working with obviously carnage as yeah. we have been before just it's just blown up it's just gone absolutely mental I, obvious, obvious question at this stage really is it living up to expectations you know or way, where does where does it start? yeah exceeded. way ahead of what i expected yeah <laughs> i mean when i started no mercy you know like as i told you before my uh, initial plan was just to have a unit with a ring in it that i could rent out to my friends <laughs> yeah. you know, to get the ring rust off uh, when shows came back from covid but mm. It's just it's it's exceeded so many of my expectations. Mm. I can't even describe it. It's I can't. Yeah, I just it's it's inexplicable. It's it's brilliant. I mean, considering the time that you've decided to embark on this as well, you know, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things. I think a lot of good has come out of COVID and the whole lockdown thing because you see that. I mean, seen it with Carnage as well. You know, the the boom that there has been since that. Um, Oh hell yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, with yours, I mean, your vision by the sounds of it, sp- like you've just touched on, it spreads beyond just what you're giving people at your events and in yeah. your ring. You know, you are working with others. I mean, is that in a way, are you are you going to be reaping more benefits from that, you know, in terms of encouraging more people to come to you through getting your name around by working with other promotions? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, also, I'm a huge believer in of getting rid of old tired dinosaur ways in pro wrestling Mm. like the days of hating a promotion just because they're 20 miles away from you like that's just ridiculous to me (laughs) it's it's so stupid and they but unfortunately there are still promotions out there like that that they'll go out and rip a poster down they'll go out and put their poster over yours it's schoolyard yeah childish tactics that needs to stop and i've since i started no mercy i've always been a proponent of I want to work with everyone that I can. I want to, like, if everyone works together, the scene gets better. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and ev- everyone wins. So yeah. I don't know why there are still people out there like that. <laughs> it's, it, it is what it is. But, um, you know, as I said, we work with Carnage, yeah. work with Chaos, Defend, Modern Nomad. Um, like the Welsh scene is in specifically right now is the, it's Massive. huge. It's yeah. the biggest it's ever been in a long time. Yeah. You know, just in a small radius, we've got, obviously no mercy we've got carnage you've got slam masters you've got defend you've got modern nomad you've got uh exposure you've got welsh wrestling that, that's just seven off the top of my head <laughs> there are more and it's just it's crazy and just the fact that most most of these companies are now working together is a huge it's brilliant thing. yeah i mean why I, i've often wondered this i don't think i've asked this all the guys i spoke to from carnage and that is what what's the reason do you believe the Welsh scene has is growing like it is, you know, compared to, I mean, other places have got promotions popping up, but the Welsh scene does seem to be quite sort of prominent yeah. at the minute. I think um, obviously a lot to do with it are, you know, you, the guys that have moved on to NXT UK, you know, like, you know, Mark Andrews and Hitch mm. and Danny, all of those guys, they s- stamped us on the map. You know, obviously they've worked for the bigger WWE shows mm. and, Obviously, we got the big pay per view coming in Cardiff, so yeah. that on its own has, and especially because it's part of the network now as well. Everyone in the world can see, oh, these guys are from Wales. There must be something going on there, you yeah. know. I think that has really, really helped things. And the, the more promotions that pop up, I mean, obviously there is going to be an issue, a, a, a problem if too many <laughs> come along. Yeah. Then it's going to be like it's a thousand. Oh a needle in the stack of needles, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I think right now, like, we've got a really, really good scene growing and and it's not even a fact of, like, because a lot of people would think, oh, it's, it's oversaturating, but it's not. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. for example, I speak with Carnage, I speak with Slam Masters, I speak with all the local guys and we all work around each other of when to put our shows on. Yeah. And, you know, we'll, we'll all, we all have a group chat and we'll say, right, I'm going to run here. Okay, I'll run here. I'll, so we don't, cross over and mess each other uh, and that's the way it should be that's what wrestling could be yeah and 
and I and as you said, I think that's why the Welsh scene in particular is climbing because we're working together rather than arguing, which is just so stupid. It's almost like the old days of the NWA, isn't it? You yeah. Know, how they exactly. ran. You know, that's that's fantastic to know that somewhere in the world, especially so close to home, really, mm-hmm. that is happening. So uh, you you've actually you you um, reminded me of something. Then obviously it wouldn't have been around last time we spoke. Was you know WWE the, the big event that is coming to to Cardiff in the yeah. summer? Um, have you got anything sort of planned? Are the are the cogs turning as to obviously how you know having that many thousands of of wrestling fans in Cardiff on your doorstep that weekend? Have you got anything planned that you're going to try and sort yeah. of um, you know take advantage of that opportunity? Well, I was thinking about it, obviously. I think it would be silly not to think about it. Mm. Um, the only issue we've got is, obviously, the pay-per-view is happening. On the same weekend, you've got Progress. You've got TNT. Um, I think there's another one happening. I think it's like a midnight show. I can't remember right. who it might be. No, it's, lost. it's gone in my head. There's at least two or three other... Yeah. Um, Oh, it's ICW. There it is. ICW are running. Oh, of course. Okay. They're running a show directly after the pay-per-view in the stadium. Oh, wow. Okay. In, in a smaller venue just down the road. Right. So, um, you know, it's 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 no it's it's not a coincidence that the that the promotions that are running are network affiliated. I think mm-hmm. we can all see why that's happening. Yeah. But again, it's it's nothing but good things. I think that it is happening because the fact that now Progress and ICW and TNT are coming to Cardiff that just gets more eyes on the Welsh scene. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if someone comes to that pay-per-view and they go to the stadium that don't live in Wales or they've never been to Cardiff maybe, mm. and they really enjoy it, they think, oh, do you know what? I'm going to go and see the show in the tram shed down the road. Yeah. And then they think, actually, this was bloody awesome. I'm going to go to Cardiff more often and see what else is there, you know? So it's all okay. it's all good. Mm. Um, but yeah, I unfortunately, No Mercy won't be doing anything show-wise around that because, again, I think it would just be a case of oversaturation. Mm. <laughs> excuse me um so we'll we'll see I'm, I'm i have something planned for that weekend but it's not in cardiff um okay. i haven't got it confirmed yet so i can't say any more than that no but, that's cool what's your yeah, space maybe something happening but yeah as for actually in the area yeah. i i personally won't be doing anything i think i'll, I'll leave it to the professionals <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you be there are you one of the lucky thousands that have got tickets or did you come um, i haven't got a ticket yet i am um, i may i don't know i'm, I'm really on the <laughs> I really am, because mainly because, I'll be honest with you, I've been so busy, I forgot that they went on sale. <laughs> I missed, which, is, which is a great excuse, really. I, I, I did really. actually miss when they went on sale, because I forgot about it. But um, yeah. I know of, like a lot of the guys that train with me, they're going to go. I know a lot of people that are going. Mm. Um, it's, as you know, a lot of people are saying, I, I mean, I saw the prices as well. I was going to say, yeah, I, I was never going to put in for the, the tickets anyway, because, I, I again, it would be really hypocritical of me, I think, to to not be interested in the product they're putting out. Cool. But, yeah, OK, I'll spend like 500 quid to go. And, you know, I could not believe those prices. It was insane. Ridiculous. So, but, uh, um, yeah. yeah, I am intrigued. I, I don't know. I, it's got big shoes to fill. You know, a lot of people are comparing it to the last time they were over here. I don't think you'll really be able to top SummerSlam at Wembley. Um, no, myself. no, not but, at all you know it's it's a great opportunity i think if i went to wales i've got plenty more reasons plenty of other reasons to come to wales to watch wrestling yes than, uh, than, yeah. than wwe so let's um um let's steer towards your the the academy for a second is this tied in with the iron cobra event yes. is this what yeah so yeah, there we go so what's the um i was going to ask you what the the idea behind that was so you touched on the fact that it's, it's linked to your academy so just yeah. sort of give us a give us a rundown of of where the you know what the shows are based around you know and what people can expect and and some of the breakout stars you've got coming through as well who who you would sort of keep, encourage people to keep your eye on oh honestly yeah we've got so many um <laughs> well i wanted to give like obviously we have our big our big shows at um team Reese gym um we're aiming to do um, sort of like back in the 90s where WWF did the big four, you know, Royal Rumble, yeah. WrestleMania, SummerSlam, mm-hmm. and uh, Survivor Series. We're kind of aiming to do that with the Team Reese show. So we'll have four big shows throughout the year yeah. and then everything else will be a Cobra show. Um, so when I say Cobra show, it's essentially an academy show. Uh, I wanted to build something just for our No Mercy guys. Um, to give them a chance to 
a show what they can do on a smaller scale yeah uh, so, so less pressure if you will yeah you know it's a smaller production smaller venue um less people obviously mm. um and just a way for them to get used to working in front of a crowd and getting correct just getting those reps in in the ring you know yeah. where you know if if they were thrown into a t uh, into one of the bigger team reese gym shows it's obviously there's a lot more people it's a bigger production it's a lot more pressure for them mm. so <clears throat> i wanted to build something like that so i sort of see it like um so that's like our developmental brand if yeah. you will yeah and then once once they start getting you know being ready to for, to come off of that then they can come on to the bigger team reshows. shows sure. um but i wanted to obviously build that brand but i wanted to do something else with it that just gives them gives the guys a reason to something to look forward to you know yeah. something to work towards yeah so i came up with this tournament um the iron cobra tournament and it's eight guys all no mercy trainees and obviously the quarterfinals happened a couple of weeks ago at the first mm -hmm. show we've got our next show on july 17th mm -hmm. in penru kaiba um that is a place name that took me a long time to learn and i'm welsh <laughs> so um I ain't got a chance. Yeah, it's uh it's it's in mountain ash so just say mountain ash it's easier okay. <laughs> mountain ash. um but yeah it's uh it's in this venue this venue like that we found so one of our trainees uh shane hooker uh his father is connected to the venue so he just said to me one day when he picked him up he was like oh i've got this venue i know of do you fancy come to have a look at it i was like yeah why not mm. Went and saw it, and it's it's like perfect for wrestling. I couldn't believe it, awesome. and it's it's like this hidden gem just sat up in the valleys that no one knows about. <laughs> and I was like, I gotta I'm have it. That. I have it. I have to have it. <laughs> so um, yeah, we had a meeting, we set it up, and I was like, yeah, we're doing this. And yeah, we had that first show, and it was so unbelievably successful. Like just the atmosphere, not only in the crowd but in the locker room, mm. it was like so much more than I could have expected. I, I got. I'm, I'm man enough to admit I got teary-eyed at the end of that show because it was oh, so yeah. emotional seeing, not only seeing, like, my guys doing, like, absolutely amazing in their matches, but just seeing the entire crowd. The crowd were hot from the start to finish, and they loved it. And so much so that the owners of the hall were like, we want you back. When can you come back? And Job we've done. got, you, you know, go. we've got dates booked up with them for the rest of the year now, and it's it's so awesome that's brilliant. that's brilliant they just loved it and it just shows you know you go to these small towns that never really have anything like this and they're itching for something you know and yeah and now and then now that we've given them a little taste of it they're like they want more you know they like, give me more is that is that what you consider the hardest part done with with that whole process is actually having somewhere that you seem to have cracked that you yeah. know then you'll have a presence so now it's just a case of working on absolutely the content yeah. as it were yeah Cool. Yeah, the hardest part, I think, you know, obviously we're only two shows in right now, but mm. it's building that fan base. Like any show, any promotion can say that they have fans, mm. but there's a difference between having fans that come because oh, it's, it's a show, they just see it and they think, oh, I'm going to go. Mm. And the fans that are going, that are like, I'm going, I don't care who's wrestling, yeah. I'm going to that show. Yeah. That's the difference between like a run of the mill fan and then a die hard, like, there's a wrestling fan and then there's a no mercy wrestling fan and that's what i want to build i want to build no mercy wrestling fans cool. and i think we've started that with these cobra shows um it was just electric it went off the chain it was so so good that's that's and awesome. i can't wait to get the footage out there it's, it's going to be amazing so you've already almost like got that hook something that people will remember no mercy for already um, yeah absolutely that, which is ah oh, that's 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 a win-win i yeah. uh i watched the um I was really saddened actually to see Powered Four TV is, is yes. soon. Yeah. Um, I watched the uh, little documentary you got out there, the We Are No Mercy. Oh uh, yeah, earlier yeah. on, which is great. There's something you said in there which really resonated with me is that you, when you're training your guys, you want to to try and take, uh, you want to get back to basics. You know what you're showing them. You want to take the, you know. I would I call it fluff, but I'm not doing it. Yeah, I know what I mean. The all the yeah. the acrobatic kind of stuff so yeah. you know if, if if someone was to come to you you're wanting to learn to wrestle you know what could they expect you know what style would you sort of start them with um you know i appreciate later on down the line they can add what they want to it but what would yeah. they expect from a no mercy training um it's, you hit the nail on the head like like i said in the documentary um 
it's we just break it down it's to the start like re- like wrestling at its core is grappling on a mat mm. that's where it comes from you know and of, as i said in the documentary obviously it's like gone mental since then yeah you know down different avenues different styles but essentially it's grappling and that's what we want to do we want we train people like i like i want our guys because we have guys of many different styles like we have um like shane hooker who can do every kind of flip you can think of and he's like a computer game character you know <laughs> if, if someone i did actually come up with a with a funny gimmick i was like i was going to have someone come up with a control pad and like <laughs> pretend to be controlling him. i like that uh, that would be funny but yeah like he, he's so athletic and he can just do anything and he's oh. he's humble and he's he's so young and he's so humble mm. and he's just so hungry for it as well like he's got the right mind for it. he's got the right attitude he's going to be like one of the breakout stars and he will be everywhere soon and I, and I and I'm not just saying that because he's one of mine mm. like even if he wasn't I would be saying the same thing yeah. um, but we've got many guys like that um in in no mercy but just for example you know like Shane does all of that stuff but then we've got guys like Tom Ferriman who are he loves the grappling style and yeah. the, the striking style and and like sort of like I don't want to say MMA but that kind of yeah, yeah. martial yeah. arts style you know yeah. and then we've got guys like Adam Carter who is just a brute <laughs> you know he's he's like <laughs> he's six foot two he's built like a wall like <laughs> you run into Adam and it is like you hit a wall it's wow. he's a he's a he's a solid lad Right. And he's just a powerhouse. You know, he'll he can throw you, no matter who you are. He, if he wants to throw you, you're going. You know, right. you don't you don't have a choice. So you know, we have many different types of wrestler in No Mercy. But when when we come down to it, everyone trains the same at the start. Mm-hmm. Our beginners do the same fundamentals classes. They do the same drills. We do the same type of training, no matter what style you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then once you start getting up into intermediate or advanced. And that's when you can start, you know, going into the kind of thing that you want to do. Yeah. But um, yeah, essentially, it's all all grappling, all basics, all fundamentals at the start. Do you think you're doing anything different with that, or or is this how a lot of uh, indie promotions start off in this way and then let other people add to it what they will? Or are there ones out there that really just go for that kind of new um, area? I don't know what to what to say. You know, it is is yeah. it's very theatrical. Um, yeah. are they, are I, they I, teaching that at grassroots or do they kind of start like you are I think th- there are go- there are going to be a few who mm. um, they just kind of teach moves if that makes yeah. sense rather than how to they'll teach you how to do a move mm. but they won't teach you why to do the move or when to do the move in a match you know like like I know I know of a of, of a training school I'm not going to name them I don't you know, no, no. cause any Sith, That's but um, actually, I don't think they exist anymore, so it doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> I remember, like, it was a while ago, and they and they literally would just teach. It was basically they would bring in people who just wanted to do things they saw on TV. So they would teach them an RKO. They would teach them a Stone Cold Stunner. They would teach them just yeah. the big moves that they saw on TV. But they wouldn't say, "Right, this is how you implement it in a match. This is yeah. how you do it. This is you know all of that kind of thing." and that just doesn't work. You know, th- there's a difference between going into the ring and performing a bunch of moves mm. and wrestling. That isn't wrestling. You know, that's just that play wrestling. It's, exactly. It's, it's high spots. And I think that's for me, that is what the mainstream product nowadays um, has too much of. I, I can't remember whose book. I have a feeling it was Brian Blair's book that mm-hmm. I've been reading. I read quite a few of them recently. Um and I think he had in there, one of the things I never really picked up on as a fan is the transition between moves. Yeah. How important that is. And the fact that nowadays, actually, they are lining up all of these high spots, but they're not actually showing how they move between and why, exactly what you just said, really, and it, it's why you're stepping into another move and how you're kind yeah. of setting that up. Exactly. And yeah. and don't get me wrong, there there is, like, obviously, there's people at that, that the highest point of the game that do it, you know, like, like Ricochet and Will Ospreay, for example, they are mm. unbelievable talents. And I'm not saying for one minute that what they do is 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 easy. Like, absolutely not. It is, it's very impressive. It's ridiculously yeah, yeah. athletic. And yeah. you have to be talented to do it. But, like, Ospreay has stopped kind of doing it now, which thankfully I'm glad of because he's stepped into a different... Like, mm. the wrestler he is now, I much prefer it. 
Mm. Like he's just brutal and like he just hurts was, people. I love it. You I know? was quite shocked when I saw that because I the only Will Osprey stuff that I've really been exposed to is, is what I've seen on the Marty Skell DVD that I've got. Yeah. And back then when he was I, I don't know how long he'd been doing it then, but yeah, it was it was very much a, he was a white meat baby face, yeah. very you know, flying about all over the place. And then I saw him as a heel and I was like. I, I like this. He's so good yeah. as a girl. I love yeah. it. And only a Brit can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. <laughs> and I, I just see it as like, like as I said, don't get me wrong. I don't see it as wrong. I just see no. it as it's more like a choreographed dance. Yeah. Where yeah. you can see every kick is planned, every miss is planned, every step, every bypass, everything is choreographed, yeah. and. I don't think that's wrestling. Like it's it's a different style of wrestling. But yeah. to me personally, wrestling is like you got to look like you're trying to win. <laughs> you got to look yeah, like, yeah, quite. You know, it, yeah. it like to me wrestling is scrappy. It doesn't look perfect. Wrestling yeah. shouldn't be perfect because at the end of the day, look at two guys in an MMA cage mm. and they just start mm. wailing on each other. That's not pretty at all. No. It, it looks horrible. But it gets the job done. Yeah, and there's and moments what, where there's moments where they're stopping, they're pausing. Exactly. For the next bit, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and yeah, that, like I find, as I said, wrestling that's too choreographed. I'm not really into it. But I'll, 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 on the same hand, it's still an unbelievable skill to it have. Is. I think whenever you see it live, whether it is a WWE or AEW show, yeah. or you're seeing it at an independent show, you know, I think whenever you see stuff like that, you you walk away impressed. Well, of course, know? absolutely. Yeah. Like I remember seeing Osprey at an attack show in Cardiff like a few years ago, mm. and as I said, like I'm not a huge fan of that choreographed style, but seeing it in person, I was I was marking out. Of course, I was. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, this is awesome! Yeah. And but yeah, as you said, like you're still gonna go. Oh, you're still gonna react. Yeah. To it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Personally, I I prefer the more. Uh, we're we're on the yeah. On the yeah, the more as I you know as I can't really say realistic, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, the more grounded wrestling. Style. Yeah, traditional. Should we say traditional? Traditional, let's it's, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's not, you know. Even, you know. even though I do flips now and again, you know. I, I think time and a place. I mean, you know, exactly. that style of wrestling has been around since, I mean, you think the early 90s. I People that spring to mind, you know, Brian Pillman. Yeah. Oh, no. Tiger, one, two, three, kid. You know, they, that was all sort of early 90s stuff. Muta. Um, some, of the, some of the stuff Owen Hart was doing in Calgary in the absolutely. late 80s. Like, you don't even see that now. No, you know, like back flipping off people's shoulders and all that stuff. Yeah, you never yeah. saw that back then. That was great. No, and so you know that has it is it's always been there, but it wasn't quite so every single match. Of course, you knew it was happening. It's, it's yeah. oversaturation again. It is a bit. It is yeah. a bit. But uh, right, let's 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 bring it a little more up to date because you've got a very exciting event coming up. Oh yes, I really want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you introduce it actually, but you've got a very special guest coming along as well. Um. I, I, I'll, I'll, you know, anyone who doesn't know Scotty Too Hotty, yeah. Scott Garland is 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 gracing No Mercy Wrestling. So, you know, tell us about it. You know how it came about, really, not only with him, but but how you're building the show and what you've got planned for it. Well, I I was born and grew up in Pembrokeshire in West Wales, and in Pembrokeshire there is nothing. Is <laughs> <laughs> to put to not to not to put a finer point on it. Um, we, we had nothing. There's no events. The, the only wrestling we were, ever had was when Welsh wrestling would come by every summer for a couple of weeks in Tenby, and that was it. And yeah. and as I said, I think I said in the last interview, like, nothing wrong with Welsh wrestling. This style. I, I, I take my hat off to those guys. They make a living. They, they're per permanently on the road. Their life is hard. You know, they're working yeah. twice a day sometimes, and I, I commend them for it. Mm -hmm. But it's... It's more of a, a pantomime style, like a camp style, which, yeah. again, nothing wrong with it. It's just not what we not do. Yeah. Um, so that's the only wrestling that we've, that in Pembrokeshire we were ever used to. Um, so I've always, in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to bring wrestling, my kind of wrestling, home. Not only because, like, any wrestler wants to wrestle in their hometown. Like, if they say they don't, they're lying. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> Any wrestler would love to work in their hometown because you know you're going to have a crowd there yeah. <laughs> for you. And yeah. that's going out before before you go out into the curtain, knowing that you're going to get a reaction is a, a huge stress relief, let's put it yeah. that way. Yeah. So yeah. everyone wants to work in their hometown, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it there. But I also wanted to bring something different. Like, we're going to be in a nightclub. Uh, it's called Out in Pembroke. 
and it's uh, it's going to be very different. It's going to be very very different. Okay. So we've got it's basically like a big pit, and okay. uh, with a balcony, three hundred and sixty balcony all the way around the ring. I have a feeling Torquay down here has a similar kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's very similar to like um, the old progress venues, okay. like the smaller yeah. progress venues. Um, but yeah, the guy that runs it, I've known him for a while, and I uh, he because that like, the actual club has been closed for like quite a few years. Like COVID got rid of it, and right. uh, he he bought it, rebranded it spent a lot of money doing it up and i just noticed one day online that he had it and i was like hmm let's like have a look and so when i when i was thinking about it i wasn't thinking about booking you know scotty at all no. i was just wanting to run a show there because as i said i just wanted to run in my hometown and uh, i went and saw him we had a meeting i looked around the place i was like this is perfect i can't wait to run here he's hugely into wrestling himself so he's up for it yeah and then it just as i said last time and I, as i said in the documentary fate just happened and i got a message from uh gary from uh wrestle carnival we stay in touch mm -hmm. and he said oh just to let you know um scotty too hot he's in the country in july because i've booked him myself you know just yeah. give me a heads up i was like oh <laughs> okay, okay okay so i was email i just literally i just sent scott an, e an email and i was like hey i i run no mercy wrestling blah, blah, blah. uh be interested in booking you can i you know can i can i know your fee how, how do you feel about it and, and he was like he was so nice like i can't believe how nice he is right i don't know what i was expecting but he's just a nice dude he's yeah. just a nice dude you forget and, don't uh, you, really though a, a lot of them are still human yeah know? exactly right yeah and because like i don't know i, I think i was expecting the scotty too hot you see on tv and yeah. I, I don't know it's, it was like <laughs> it was the meet your hero thing and yeah. uh yeah. Anyway, yeah, we, we negotiated for a while and and I was like, well, the only date that he had available was July 14th, which is a Thursday. And I wanted, of course, I every promoter wants a weekend yeah, for obvious yeah. reasons. So, but it, unfortunately, he only had July 14th, Thursday available. So I was like, do you know what? I'm going to try. So I went to the, uh, I went to the venue owner, Carl, and I said, right, Carl, we've got f four and a half weeks. Can we do this? And he went, damn right, we can <laughs> So I, like I you know, oh, so I was like, do you know what? Everything with No Mercy so far has been under pressure. So why change now? Absolutely. So I, uh, I booked Scotty Duharty with four and a half weeks notice to do this show. That's so uh, obviously, it'd be stupid of me to to ask. You know, you obviously know what your plans are for him mm -hmm. for the show. You know, I'm not expecting you to divulge those. Um, but obviously, you know, giving giving people a bit of the old school or are we are we sort of you know bringing trying to bring Scotty a little bit more up to date. What's happening? Um it'll be a little bit of both. Um as I as you said like I, I have I know the plans obviously mm. um I'm not gonna dive out, divulge too much but yeah. I will give a little clue. All I'll say is I'm the biggest too cool mark you'll ever find. When I was 13, 14 years old, um, I was a huge, huge too cool fan to the point where I dressed up as Grandmaster Sexy and like envisioned tagging with Scotty Too Hotty. That's all I'll say. Oh, okay. Okay. I got a fair idea. If, that, if it's going along, I mean, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, but um, I'm, I don't know whether this is going to be too marky. I don't know whether I should do it or not, but uh, I really want to dance with him. <laughs> oh, really come do. on, you've got to. You've got to. I've got, um, I've got tickets to see him at one of the legs. I, I think a couple of weeks later, he's coming down to Exeter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd already, by the time you had, um, uh, you'd announced him, I'd already got tickets to go and see that. I think that is the one thing everyone is expecting. In a way, whether you think it will happen or not, I think that's the one thing you can probably get away with. Yeah, I mean, so. you know, I've there's a reason why I've been practicing the worm for 15 years. <laughs> it's at this moment. <laughs> Absolutely. And and I can do it. I can do the worm. And people don't think I can do it, but I can do it. And this is the reason why. I didn't know why I was learning how to do it, but now I know this is the reason. And as I said, fate has landed in my lap and... I will be doing the worm as well. Is that stepping outside of, of your kind of, you know, character as well, your persona? Oh, 100%. A little bit. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not only? We're going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be a different kind of show to what No Mercy is used, used to doing. It's going to be very uh, indie. 
if you yeah. will. It's 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 going to be dropping the veil a little bit, yeah. a lot less serious, sure. having a, a lot more fun, yeah. and similar, you know, like uh, Modern Nomad is a great example. Like the 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 local shindy shows they put on, like with Detective Gene Money and all of that stuff with the voiceovers going like that. Yeah. Like to to a traditional serious wrestling fan, they'd be like, "Oh no, that's terrible. That's mm. that's killing the business." But I I think it, in the certain time and place, it, it's so good. Yeah. And and we were we were working crew in for Modern Nomad, and Gene Money came out as his detective persona, and he had like voiceovers going on, and he kept like a fake cigarette in his mouth the entire show of the match, <laughs> and like right. he he built the match around trying to get his hat back. It was so <laughs> funny. I was like. I had tears in my eyes and I don't usually like that style of wrestling, but it's so good. So yeah. I was like, I'm definitely wanting to implement a lot more of that in That's these cool. shows. That's cool. I think a certain element of that people do expect that now. I mean, you know, yeah. even back in the day, I'm reading more and more, you know, um, delving into the wrestling history and that the house shows, particularly during the nineties, there was some great, ribs as yeah. they were i guess between yeah. some of the guys owen hart was normally involved yeah, but they would throw some stuff in matches that you would never see on tv but yeah. you know you had to you, you, you know, why not they can get away with it when the cameras aren't rolling you exactly know, you, can, you can do so much more yeah and you send the guy you send the fans home with something they can remember absolutely yeah and that's that's what i'm planning for this is sending everyone home with like that was amazing and yeah. hopefully and that if that goes well we can go back there and i can run regularly because as i said not only am i gonna have scotty too hearty on my show but i'm gonna be working in front of my hometown and yeah all of my old school friends are gonna be there and like they've had most of them have never even they don't even know i wrestle never mind seen it so oh, now wow. that they've now they've seen me advertise it they're like what is going on <laughs> i'm on because i'm on the poster with scotty and they're like yeah what it's that's brilliant amazing that's so amazing. uh yeah july 14th in pembroke in pembrokeshire that's when the show is happening and uh, actually funnily enough i've just had a notification a competition has just gone up on facebook for people to win tickets oh there you go yeah. so right. if you head to the no mercy uh facebook page depending on when you're uh, I'll, add, I'll add i'll add it on later brilliant <laughs> depending on when you're watching this of course it might have already finished. But, uh, yeah, depends. It's, I mean, depends. It's, it's a guy within a couple of days. So, you know, yeah, depends how, cool. yeah so it should be, should still be up there. But awesome. uh, uh, no, I encourage anyone within the vicinity. I mean, even if you're not in the, the, the sort of, you know, the Wales district, you know, yeah. go over there. Yeah, yeah we, would... we've, we've got a few guys traveling from Cardiff way to come down to watch it. And like, you know, at the end of the day, it's quite too hot. You, you've got to see it. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be great. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's so great that, there are still these guys um, from our day um, yeah, yeah. back then who are still doing it and still can. You know, there's mm -hmm. some people, there's an obvious one I could throw out there that I know is, is getting back in the ring and really shouldn't have. And I've said it many, many times over the last many, many years that he shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Um, but from what I've seen of Scotty, he can still go. Absolutely. You yeah. Know, he's I mean, he, he, was, he was smart. You think about what he actually did back in the Attitude Era. He didn't go crazy. No. He, you know, he was smart. He kept it simple. Mm. That's why he can carry on doing it. And, and obviously, he was a trainer in, in the performance center. So he had yeah. access to all of that service, you know, all of the rehabilitation, all that. So, yeah, yeah, he, he can go. He can really, really go. It's great. I had, he actually, where I, where I live in Newton Abbott in South Devon, um, this is going back probably about, I don't know, six years or so, maybe um, six or seven years. Too Cool were in our town, it, actually in Newton Abbott, in one of the community centres here. Oh, wow. And um, it was just when they started, um, a certain company around here was starting to do shows around, you know, Newton Abbott, Paynton, around Torbay, where I am. Yeah. And I couldn't go. Um, it was my my kids probably were only about sort of six months old or something at the time, or just under a year. Yeah. My, my missus, it was Valentine's night. I couldn't go because my missus went to see Fifty Shades of Grey in the cinema with her friend. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, obviously Brian Christopher was was still with them as well. And I I, yeah. I won't let her forget that now that I you know uh, I, I I missed out on that because she was literally just down the road from the venue watching Fifty Shades. Man, there we go. That's so, unfortunate. It is a bit. Very. But there we go. Oh no, yeah. all the all the best with that. That sounds an absolutely amazing show. You know, what you guys have done, what you've done already, um, 
you know, with No Mercy is nothing short of amazing. You know, Thank you. like I say, Thank considering you. coming coming out of um, the last couple of years that we've had, and the fact that you just hit the ground running, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I follow you. I would absolutely be like Carnage. You know, I would love to plan if you, if you, if ever between the two of you, you can get some shows over like a couple of days apart. Yeah, gives me, a, gives me a reason to come up there, and oh yeah, yeah, you know, I could, I could sort of you know take both shows. Well, in. we do have a show a week apart. Oh, um, oh, I don't know if I can say because I don't know if they've announced. It. I don't know if they've announced it yet. All right, let me know separately. Yeah, I will. No, yeah, personally. I mean, I can say mine. Our second Team Reese Gym show will be August twentieth. Um, all I'll say is, I think possibly theirs might be around that date, okay. <laughs> but cool. don't quote me on it because I don't know if they've announced it. That's fine. That's fine. I'll keep that under yeah. my hat, and I will have a look at that. I, yeah, I really, really would love to come and experience it for myself. Um, Absolutely. So I, I will, um, obviously, like I always do, I'll put all your links and everything um, and, and, you know, link people to where to find you. But just for the purpose of this, you know, as well as the show that's coming up, anything that you that you know you've got coming up, that you've got going on, you want to give a shout out to a couple of minutes before we finish, just to give you the floor, really. Um, I mean, I think I've pretty much said it all, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do it again. I mean, sure. obviously, we've got the Scotty Too Hearty show. It's called Out for Wrestling on July Thursday, July 14th in Pembroke. In Pembrokeshire. Um, a few days later, we've got our second Cobras show um, in the in the new series for our, as I said, our developmental, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Rise of, uh, sorry, Dawn of the Cobras. Rise of the Cobras was the first one. Oh, cool. um, where we've got the uh, the semi-finals of the Iron Cobra tournament and a few other matches, of course. And then after that, I think we are in. Yeah, we got Team Reese Gym August twentieth, where the final of the Iron Cobra tournament will be held. Um, and we've got some very, very awesome names for that show already booked, <laughs> and I can't wait. Um, I, I actually, last night, sorry, not last night, night before last, booked a very prominent name in Brit Ress who is making his return oh. after a couple of years. Okay. Um, I can't say who it is because I haven't announced him yet, but he, we're, he's, we're going to be his first show back after after a couple of years wow um, and he, he he's a very let's let's say he's a he's a huge progress favorite back in the day okay. We'll okay. um and he's based in wells so you might be able to put some uh two and two together with that but uh, yeah i booked him two days ago so wow he's gonna be on it um we're gonna have kelly six um we're gonna have all of the usual favorites uh who else have we got we've got big t on we've got jay joshua um, who also is going to be on the July 14th show as well, actually, saying that. Um, yeah, all of you, all the usual No Mercy guys. Uh, that show is going to be huge. And then after that, I think it's September 18th is the third Cobra show in Penrith, Mountain Ash again. And then we'll have our Halloween show in October for the Cobras. Yeah. And then we'll have our Christmas show in Team Reese in December. So... I, w I was going to ask actually, how far are you? How far do you plan? You know, you know, the, you mentioned about the last three count of the show that you're on. Is your mind already thinking about the next show? Is it already yeah. pretty much planned? Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Me personally, I'm two shows ahead all the time. Yeah. Um, all like the rest of my team, obviously, they're set on what's coming next. Mm -hmm. But I'm. I'm always like a show or two ahead, yeah. just to. Because if I don't do that, my brain explodes. So I, I've got to stay ahead of myself. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I, I always, I've, I've tried to book all the way up to the end of the year, just so I can, when Christmas comes around, I can just be like, right, calm down, breathe, have a couple of weeks off. Now yeah. let's get back onto it. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot coming up. We've got a lot, coming up. and of course, we've got seminars for the academy coming up. We, I mean, we just, we had in the space of like three months, we had Martin Kirby. Uh, Kelly Six, Mark Andrews. Uh, have we had any more? Danny Jones. Yeah, we. And that was all in the space. I think that was in the space of like two and a half months. So, it's insane. We've got loads more coming as well, which is going to be great. I'll tell you and, what, uh, you know, so let's do this again. Let's let's complete a trilogy. The end of the yeah, year, about six definitely. months time, we can do a year in review. Episode, yeah, why not? You know, yeah. That'd be amazing. So. That sounds good. Yeah, let's do it. Brilliant. Listen, um, thank you so much for coming back on. This has been amazing to catch up with you and um, I, I encourage anyone out there who's watched this who doesn't already follow the No Mercy Wrestling pages. I'll put the links on the uh, on the episodes. Um, keep up to date. You know, there's some fantastic stuff by the sounds of it that is uh, 
that is still to remain for this year. So yeah, no, all the best with it all, mate. Yeah, thank you, mate. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime, mate. Speak to you again. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to like, share and hit the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep updated about all future shows.